At this point, you should have all of your parts built. You should have all of your parts labeled correctly. And lastly, you should have all of your parts assigned a material. You can then go through and this week, part of your, your project is supposed to be that you are supposed to do your math quiz and then you are also supposed to start your assembly. Now your math quiz, let me go through and just explain to you what you are going to be looking at. So with each one of your parts that you have built, you are going to right click on the part and you have a, a material already assigned to it. So it's selected and then you can come over here and you will see the mass. Make sure the mass matches, meaning the um, ounces or pounds or kilograms, whatever, whatever it as, is asking for in um, the quiz question, make sure that you are using the proper units. Now you will notice here that it rounds my measurement down to only three decimal places. In this case, 3.346. If I hover over it, you'll notice it actually shows a larger unit or larger um, measurement. I only care about the rounded one, so you can just right click on it. Or actually, it won't even let you do a right click. You can do a copy, a control C, and then you can go over to your quiz question and then you can do a control V. The only thing is that when you do a control V, let me just show this here. If I do a control V on it, it's gonna come up with ounces afterwards. Just make sure you, you get rid of the space and then the ounces. So you're just putting in that raw value. If you put the space and the ounces after it, it is going to automatically mark it wrong for you. So just be careful of those things. Uh, let's see here. Why don't we talk about doing an assembly first? So I'm going to go down, create assembly. Obviously you have to have all of your parts created. Now you guys should just be watching up here. You shouldn't be doing anything right now. When you go to create your assembly, we are just gonna be using the fasten mate tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my items first. I should have six items. I am missing, what am I missing? One, two, three, four, five. Looks like I'm missing the downloaded piece. Yeah. All right. So I've got all six pieces here. You notice it jams them all on top of each other. Just left click hold and you can move your objects around. If the orientation is off on one of your parts. Now all mine are drawn in the correct orientation, but if for some reason one of your parts, come on, move, there we go. If one of your parts happened to be drawn in the wrong plane, you could obviously go back and change your original sketch so that it represents the correct plane, whether it be the front, the right side, or whatever it is. Another little cheat that you can use is if you select on the item one time, you're going to come up with this really funky UCS. What you can do is if you look at these icons, you're going to notice it kind of shows you different ways that this circle can be rotated. So when I look here, if I select on this piece here, I can now rotate my objects left to right and notice it gives you a little sweeping blue indicator here okay generally when you go to rotate it it's going to be rotated off of 90s peter put it away okay 
my case, I'm just going to keep it at zero because it is in the proper location or proper rotation. Again, if you needed to, let's say my object was laying in the wrong orientation, it was laying flat, and I needed to, to get it so that it is rotated correctly, I can do that. Do you necessarily have to do any of that? No, but it makes things a lot easier for you. A lot easier. So, how did I get the object to be red? So, if I go back to, let's say, my wheel, what I can do is I can actually right click on it and I can go edit appearance. And then I can pick a color. All right. So, now when I go to do my assembly or my mating, I'm going to use Fasten Mate. I am going to. First, I'm going to make the bushing to the wheel itself. I am going to choose this face. And I want to make sure that my little widget is also indicating that it is going in the direction of the we or of that bushing, the lengthwise of it. So if you look and you'll see this little blue line right here, it's going front to back. That's what we wanted to do. So I'm going to click on that one time. <clears throat> Find my wheel wherever it is. And then I want to pick on same circle. I want to make sure that I'm on the same face. And I want to make sure that it is going in the same orientation. So I can select it. And you'll notice it places the object. If your object is placed backwards, you have the flip-flop option. Let's say my object needed to be adjusted. It's not sitting in the proper location. I have the ability to use offset. The most common offset that you guys are going to use is the Z axis, which is going to be the blue indicator. I could offset it if I needed to offset it five units. Positive units are going to offset it to the right. Negative units are going to offset it to the left. In this case, I don't need to offset it, so I'm just going to leave it at zero. I want you to verify that the part looks correct. Okay, look at both sides of it. Is the item sitting flat? Yes, it is. Is it sitting flat on this side? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Now, after you've made it a couple of parts together, one of the things I want you guys to do is I want you to use the group feature. So... Draw a box around the item. You will notice it selects them. It also should have the center part selected. You're going to find the group command. It is basically under my screen. is right underneath the education tab. So I click on group. And then I just click OK. The reason why I do that is because on occasion, <clears throat> when you go to try to make things together, Let's say I try to mate the wheel to the bracket. If the bracket's here, depending on what order I pick between the wheel and the bracket, sometimes it'll take the wheel and it'll bring it over to the bracket. Other times it'll take the bracket and move it over to the wheel. But on occasion, it'll forget to, to also bring the bushing over. And I don't know what causes that, why it does it to some people, why it doesn't do it to the other. But you've already fastened the object, so it should be fixed to that to those between the wheel and the bushing. But if it's not, I just group it. Problem solved. Okay. It's going to give you some red errors over on the side. I don't really care. It still allows you to do everything that we need to do. Again, I would take fasten. I'm going to pick this inside center point of the bracket circle. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to pick the same thing. I'm going to pick the face. And I want to make sure that it's grabbing the center point of that circle. You'll notice it brought my bracket over to my wheel. Great. But I've got a major problem here. And that major problem is that my bracket is currently 
occupying the exact same space as my wheel. I'm going to use flip-flop. Okay. You'll notice it has corrected the problem, but is my wheel in the right orientation? Or my, I shouldn't say my wheel, but is my bracket in the correct orientation? The answer is no. So I can use the rotate. One of these will allow me to rotate. Should allow me to rotate. Awesome. Okay, well. <clears throat> Wasn't allowing me to rotate in. Now see here's. Let's see if it fixes it. So I've now done that. See how it, I had the part fastened, right? But I did a rotate to it and it completely destroyed it. So I'm just gonna come over to my fasten too. I'm gonna delete that selection because it didn't work. I don't know why it does this sometimes. Again, fasten mate, pick your object. Pick your placement. Is it going to do this to everybody? No. But one thing that you are all going to have to do is you are going to have to pay attention to the following. Currently, my wheel is sitting in the wrong location. It is jammed into my bracket. Now, depending on what face you pick, it's going to depend on how much my offset's going to be. If I picked one of my inner edges to work off of, my offset would only be one unit. The reason why I come up with one unit is my overall inside bracket space is 30 millimeters. My wheel is only 28. In this case, because it's jammed all the way through the bracket, I actually need to use offset and choose a distance. I'm going to the left, so it's going to be a negative number right off the bat. And I've got to go the thickness of my bracket plus that space, which is three. It went the wrong way. It's trying to move the bracket, not the wheel. So I'm going to then just delete off the, the negative. And then you will notice that it adjusts it. Something's still off of mine. So I'm just going to adjust it to four. No, nope, still doesn't work. So I'm going to just try 3.5. So it gives you that visual so it looks right. Okay. I probably have a measurement wrong somewhere. I green check mark it once you know that that spacing is proper. Next, you would need to fit your pin. Same idea. Pick this surface, making sure that you are grabbing the center point of it. Okay, this face, grabbing the center of your actual pin. Try to grab anything else, it's just going to cause you nothing but a headache. And then again, pick center, going the wrong way, flip flop it. Okay. Looks like I might have picked the wrong, the wrong surface, so I don't really need to cancel out of it. I can just do offset, and I can change my distance. You can also grab your part. And you can move it, usually. Now, yeah. it's going to make a liar out of me. Wants to move everything. Keeps going with the whole part. You should be able to move that part. It's probably because it's buried in there and I can't really grab onto it. But I'm just going to do, let's see if I do four units. Okay, it moves it the wrong way. Okay, brings it over. Probably only needed to be that 3.5 because I think I have a measurement incorrect. Green check mark it. You will know that your part is correct when you have this groove just being visible. Okay. Now, in order to get your groove placed, or excuse me, not your groove, 
your external retaining ring, wherever it went. Ah. Here's my external retaining ring. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go fast and mate. The edge that I'm gonna pick is going to be one of these curved faces. You'll see it in the video. I just lost my drawing. What, do here? All right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick I'm going to pick this curved face right here to place my pin. Now you're going to notice it has completely screwed up my drawing. Why did it completely screw up my drawing? There's one reason why it screwed up my drawing. And that is because I did not use what feature? What? Group. I forgot to use group. So I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna see what happens if I just kind of let it sit there. If I green check mark it, you'll notice it's part of it, but it kind of screwed up everything. Okay, let me go back. Let me make sure that I put the group. I wish my zoom worked correctly. Let me select everything here. Again, let me group it. Green check mark it. I'm gonna move this part over here so that I can actually kind of work on it a little bit easier. All right, so, oh my God. Struggle's real here, guys. Struggle's real. Fasten. I'm going to pick curved face. To this curved face right here. No idea where it just went. Come on. Where'd it go? Thirteenth time's a charm. Let's try this again. I don't know if I had something I accidentally selected that I wasn't supposed to. Mate. So this curved face here. There you go. Green check mark. You now have your snap ring in its proper location. Last thing you would need to do is pick this surface right here. Bless you. And then the surf right here, I think it's gonna work. I don't know. They kick me out. I even kicked me out of command. That surface. And then I want this surface right here. 
Green check mark it. Put in isometric. There your part is. Okay. Now, for those that aren't paying attention, I'm not going to post the item to you. I'll post it to everybody else. Because it's extremely disrespectful that I'm up here trying to help you out for your final. And a couple of you decide that you're going to do whatever you want to do. Okay. Now, you can see I struggled a little bit, probably because I'm trying to rush through it. But it should not be that complicated of a thing so long as you are just picking the correct surfaces. If you are struggling with it, bring it up to me. Take a look at it, see if I can help you with it. Now, next things I wanna to talk to you guys about are going to be your working drawings. Uh, let's see here. I will show you guys a couple things on these working drawings. Number one, how do you get your text image in? For your title block. Right where it says DXF, right underneath it is insert image. You'll see your hot tech image. You just simply need to pick a location that you want to place it, put it in, and then you can move it around to wherever you need to. All the other text is exactly the same. One of the things that you are required to do for this drawing that you did not do in other drawings is putting in the mask. So again, where you copied and pasted it so now, you are going to be pasting it again into your working drawing, making sure that you are labeling the ounces, okay? Chances are, I probably even still have that sitting in my paste queue, and I do. Okay. Make sure that you are filling out all of your materials, your finishes, title, Make sure you also are labeling all your sheets correctly. And then when you go to do the drawing itself, a couple of things come up. First, how do I get my object to be shaded? I right click on it and then I can go, where is it? Show hide, and then you would change it. So mine says hide shaded view. You would go show hide, uh, shaded view. Okay. So right now it's not shaded. I would go show hide shaded view. There it is. It's now shaded. You want to get it so that your views show right and front underneath them. Double click on them. And then you have where it says scale label or view label depending on what is on each one of the pages, that's what I want to see. If I happen to miss a dimension on one of these sheets, and if you miss it too, I'm not going to take points off of it because that's an error on my part. But things I want you to check in your drawings are your chamfers. Make sure that you are doing your chamfers correctly. Make sure you are also making sure that your rib is the correct height, correct width, and the correct extruded depth. Okay? If you need to show center lines or hidden lines for an object, again, right click, show hide, you have hidden view, and then you also have center lines. Again here, show hide, and then I can show or hide my center marks. It's automatically gonna show the center points for circles. You can just leave it just the way it is. On the wheel, one of the things that was talked about in the wheel drawing was how to create a section view. I'm going to go ahead and delete off my, my um, right side view. So all I've done is imported in my main object. I'm then going to use the drop down, find something called section view. Reggie, stand up. I'm then going to select my center point. And then I, all I need to do is just drag over to the right-hand side. It's automatically going to create my section view. What is my section view? It is nothing more than where I take and I cut a part in half or in a quarter or whatever it is. These hatch marks, they 
represent the cut marks, where it was cut through. <coughs> so here's my section. I need to create a detail of my section. So all I gotta do is go down to my drop down of a detail view, pick my location, draw my circle around it, and then I can place my detail view. If it's the wrong size, double click on it, and then I can change the size. Okay. And I can do whatever I need to do to, to label it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Anything else I need to talk to you guys about with this? Oh, um, on this drawing, originally when you look at it, when you import it in, it is going to look like this, where there's a lot of extra lines. What happens when you create puts in a in Onshape or Inventor or any of those programs, it's always going to show you the outermost edge and then basically your tangent point of where your, your radius meets your straight or your flat areas. For us, it's kind of confusing to look at it and it's kind of annoying to look at. So what we can do is we can right click, we can go tangent edges, and we can hide them. And it just makes a simplified view nice and clean for us. Okay. So those are a couple things that you need to pay attention to in the drawing and in your uh, assemblies. A lot of this is also spelled out for you in the original worksheets. That being said, I am going to be